Hey guys, it's Beth. Today I wanted to share with you a little bit about my NaNoWriMo novel. I'm just going to come out and tell you I did not win. I think I had 40,012 words, 41,012 words by the time midnight rolled around on the 30th, which is amazing when you think about the fact that I spent a lot of time doing anything but writing on my NaNo project. So I think I had maybe a hundred words in a week at some point. So the fact that I got to 41,012, I'm pretty proud of that. And, um, you know, I wrote 9,000 words in the last 24 hours. So that's probably not a new personal best, but really stinking close. Um, so the title of my novel is The Way We Were, Are, or Whatever. And uh, it's about... A group of friends who start to have kind of dreams that are flashbacks and they come to realize that they're having similar dreams dreams about the same times and the same things and then they kind of figure out through a series of different events that these dreams are actually their past lives they are getting these memories and it's warning them and trying to prepare them for something so the first half of the book is going to be set up differently from the second half and it's set up differently from anything I've done before. So what we've got is the first half is going to be a series of almost short stories where we have the different perspectives of each character and some of the things that are happening in the story are going to be the same so you'll see um, different characters what they see um, during little snippets of their lives together and then some of them will be just one or two of the characters have that memory or just one of the characters has that memory or that thing happen. Um, we have seven main uh, characters plus a main character group of characters that is the enemy. So you have Eliza and Brent and Lee and Skye and Lenora Clay and Joel and those are the modern day names for our characters that's how we will know them and then in their flashbacks we'll learn about past lives past names etc and then we also have the foundation now the foundation is headed by Axel Gray and it's actually a charitable foundation that is a couple hundred years old it's been around even longer than that but the foundation title is only a couple hundred years old and what they do is generations upon generations of men as their family kind of their heirs grow then they are brought into the foundation and they throw charity balls and they do community service and you know they just kind of evolve with the times and work their military they are in helping situations and they're all kind of from money backgrounds you can get into the foundation if you're not for money, but it's a lot more difficult. Um, and so like the top level that everybody sees, the public level, it's all niceties. They do a lot of good. They do millions of dollars a year in charities. And then there's kind of a second level that's the higher ups for the foundation. And they're still very charitable. And then there's a third level and you have to go through a lot of work and training and all sorts of other things to get to level three and it's a very secret level and that's where you learn that maybe the foundation is not as charitable as everybody thinks it is and maybe their end goal is not going to be quite such a good thing and so we've got all of these characters coming coming together but separate in the first half in the second half of the book which to be honest with you I've got 40 something thousand words on it at this point and I don't have any of the second half of the book written this is all the short story segments this is the longest book I will have ever written but in the second half we're gonna switch from having the different uh, perspectives to having the story move in a more traditional manner but today I want to read you the very beginning of Eliza's and the very beginning of Brent's um, pages to just kind of show you what I'm talking about. We'll start with Eliza. Um, and her full name is Eliza Pole Grace and at the beginning of each of the different segments we'll give 
the full name and you know birth date and things like that I'm gonna skip this first paragraph and go straight to her first flashback I have spent lifetimes loving and dying for you lifetimes not saying a word as I fought to protect everything we both held dear everything we were everything we are everything we could possibly ever be in any life well I'm saying something now you want a ride or die chick I have ridden on the back of dragons into battle for you I have used magic men and murder at your behest I have died more than once and I've done it all for you hell I've even washed your dirty laundry we are connected you and I we keep coming back to the same group to each other and I will not stay silent this time and watch you hurt yourself again and again why in heaven's name did you think I would stick around for so long you silly silly man Eliza woke up in a cold sweat her dark hair wild and clinging to her head as she sat bolt upright and gasped frantically for air she felt like this must be what drowning victims succumb to whatever reply her audience would have made was lost to the wilds of dreamland because when she saw that familiar face the familiar lines of his ginger bearded face eliza was shocked from her sleep she couldn't know what he would have answered it had all seemed so real that even now shivering under a down comforter in flannel pajamas she could feel the ghost of ancient dresses skimming her skin and the press of surprisingly warm and soft scales beneath her strong thighs if she closed her eyes and took a deep breath the sights sounds and scents of an ancient world stirred through her senses which is why she didn't close her eyes again for a few minutes that's it she grumbled punching her poor hapless pillow back into a more pleasing shape before collapsing into it face first no more fantasy novels before bed for you eliza and then we'll flip over to Brent. His full name is Brent Allen Lilfer. I don't say it correctly, and he's my character. Um, it is a Celtic name. I will learn how to say it. I promise. All right. His starts out, The dream started out just like any other day in his life. He didn't have cause to even identify what was happening as anything other than a typical Tuesday morning, or to think that it might even be a dream until she spun around and began to lecture him on love with her golden eyes flashing much too brightly for a normal argument. I can't believe you, Eliza spluttered to her perpetually confused business partner. I've spent lifetimes loving and dying for you. Lifetimes not saying a word as I fought to protect everything we both held dear. Everything we were, are, and could possibly ever be in any life. Well, I'm saying something now. You want a ride or die chick? I've ridden on the back of dragons into battles for you. As Eliza's monologue continued, Brent found himself the fixed point in the middle of constantly changing scenery. It was as though someone had grabbed up the remote control and started flipping channels. Different countries, time periods, and scenes sped around him quickly, all of them somehow familiar to the 30-year-old advertising creator from Central Florida. As suddenly as it had begun, the channel stopped changing, leaving Brent standing at the mouth of a yawning valley between impossibly high cliffs. He was covered in clothing of thick animal hides and a most absent-mindedly brandishing an ornate bone and bronze sword that would make a modern man swoon and have a fit of the vapors. Surrounded by his best friends, his advisors, and the closest members of his pack, the Alpha of Alphas, Alwyn Breen, surveyed the coming tribes. They meant to take his title and his life. He couldn't let that happen, not when his pack was counting on him to protect them and their families. His sisters, Jessa and Hannah, bustled around seeing to last-minute preparations for the battle and for moving anyone that was left from the area villages away from harm's way. Sain and Kian, his most trusted advisors and friends, were poring over any information they could find on the other packs and doing their best to concentrate on final tactics instead of the women that were trying to distract them. The pack was gathering tightly together now the inner circle of the office small group needing proximity to keep them focused and gathered for what was soon to come. The air held the grim silence of awaiting doom, and the sin of fear was almost enough to overcome even Halwyn. But somehow, in the middle of it all, Master Halwyn Breen, the first Alpha of Alphas, found himself still vital, still straining, searching in every direction for an unknown, until a sudden and silent ping of recognition scorched through his body and soul. Sliding home like the final piece of a difficult puzzle, his ears focused on the silkily dulcet tunes of the Lady Constance Deny, 
the Pack Witch. So that's just the beginning of both of theirs. Um, obviously, Halwyn is Brent and Constance is Eliza in past lives, or hopefully it's obvious enough that it can be picked up on by my readers. Um, and I would just love to know uh, what you guys think, if you have any ideas. I do have some other books that are already available. In fact, most of my books will be free at some point during December. Uh, the first in my Dragon series is free through the end of the week, and it goes on from there. So if you guys want to check it out, I will link my Amazon page down below, and you can pick up those ebooks and let me know what you think. And if you think my writing's improving, getting worse, already perfect, let's go with that one. You know, whatever it is that you want to say, just leave me a comment. I can't wait to hear from you. Until next time, guys. Bye!